So well, here we are again, and here's the 57 Corvette project. And what we have now is the complete frame fabricated and actually tack welded. And it's kind of in the car, it's like temporarily bolted in for like a mock-up uh, completion. But you can see the, uh, all the steel work is done. All the body mounts are done. The uh, old school ladder bars, the pivots, the bars, the nine inch Ford rear end, coil overs, the rear frame, pan hard rod that just keeps the, uh, the suspension on us side to side. But really, essentially, all the steel work is done. All the engine mounts, transmission mount, front straight axle, suspension, steering, steering box, steering column, even the drive shafts in. And this is the... Uh, What's that drive shaft made of? That's a, a steel, but it's it's custom made, it's balanced. It's uh, that's beautiful. heavy duty U-joints and, uh, and yoke into the trans. Wow. And what are these extra cross members? Well, this is actually the ladder bar system. It's it's nothing more this than is just a, a truss uh, on there. This is nothing more than a think of it as a great big hinge. And what it does is it hinges kind of pretty close to the CG of the car. That's where it's going to lift. And this uh, extra brace in here, this is just an additional truss to pick up some of the uh, higher torque load from the rear axle tubes. That is totally cool. And you can see the pan hard rod. When the car is down, the pan hard rod is pretty much horizontal, and that's where you want it. So it draws a radius. So what that does is it keeps the rear end located left to right. So if you're going around a corner, uh, it's picking up your uh, side load to keep the rear end exactly in the center of the uh, car, the frame and the body. Wow. But all the steel work is uh, cut, tacked in place. Mm -hmm. These are actually mounts for, um, I actually use hockey pucks. In fact, I'll get one to show you. These are my suspension stops, and this will actually be, there'll be a recessed screw and they'll be bonded on there. But what that will um, what that will achieve is when the car if the car should bottom out, the rear end will actually hit on this uh, dense uh, rubber material rather than uh, bottoming out the shock or hitting the, uh, the the tire on the fender. So it's actually a stop, and the front has the same thing. Now, did you make the axle? I had this housing made special. It's a nine inch Ford. And that's what uh, that's what the race guys like. It's pretty heavy duty, 31 spline. What's different about this uh, Ford rear end is that I had the U joint located in the center. On this particular car, the tunnel is exactly in the middle, so I had this rear end built with this drive shaft located in the center, so I wouldn't have to butch up the uh, body for the tunnel. These are some pretty big tires. Yeah, these are actually uh, street legal tires, cheater slip, so get a little more traction. And it's a fun car. It's a it's a gasser, really. And and the objective again is uh, I wanted to um, I wanted to resemble a car that was made in 1960. You know, kind of that time frame, like a like an early dragster a Woodward car. And I think I'm there, dude. This is maybe awesome. an some. Yeah, you did a nice job. So you started off with two by fours. Started off with um, wood, and we actually built a frame out of wood. So we had a complete mock-up. And the advantage to that is you can sketch it out, or maybe these guys use uh, AutoCAD. But you know what? It's nothing like um, laying something out and getting a visual. Yeah. So I actually made some changes from my uh, from my early design. Once I uh, laid it out with wood. And I could get a nice visual. I put a couple other angles in to get some extra clearance, extra strength. Well, that's a nice welding. Yeah, that's my son. He's a good welder. I can lay it out, clamp it up, and 
and keep my son welding up a storm. That's a pretty sizable cross member. Yeah, and it's also uh, welded in, and so it's not necessarily ideal to pull the trans out, but it gives me a lot more strength. I have to actually push the engine and trans forward to get it out, but the reason for this cross member being uh, welded in here is it picks up the ladder bar mounts, and they're also gusseted in. Wow. But also, at the end of the ladder bar mounts, I've got a, uh, a pretty stout piece of steel that goes up through the floor, and it picks up the truss system. And what the truss does is it kind of picks up a cage around the engine. And so I call that the superstructure. So it'd be all the, all the super torque loads are actually from the front of the ladder bar up to the front engine mount. And so that whole area is, think of it as like a big box to hold it all square. So you don't have just uh, uh, two rails that are out to uh, flex and twist. Wow. So they're, uh, they're trusses. And it's designed so that you can unbolt the trusses that go through the car. In other words, from the top point through the firewall down to the uh, um, in front of the seat inside the car. You can unbolt those and that way you can lift the body off the frame. You don't have something welded on. Uh, now is this your design here? Or yeah, you... kind of give it an old school design like uh, an old car would have for a, for a body mount. There's not a lot of load on that, so I didn't need it boxed in. Is something very simple. The body is extremely light, but that's the original body mounts. So we made steel mounts to, to accept those. But on this um, on this design, what I'm doing is I'm mounting the body 100% uh, to the frame solid, so it'll be kind of frame body like a super uh, unibody construction. And not only will I have these body mounts, but about every eight inches, I'm going to put another bolt through the floor into the frame. I'm just going to drill and tap. Wow. So it'll be uh, one and the same. The that's, body doesn't have a lot of structure anyway, so I'm tying it all together. That's a serious pivot point. That's heavy duty, isn't it? That's a one inch grade eight bolt. Wow. That's a uh, nylon that I machined to fit in there. And there's even a uh, bulkhead within that uh, pivot to, to hold it all together. So it's not relying on just the nylon. You're going to put a Zerk a fitting in point. there? I don't think we're going to need a Zerk with the nylon, but uh, heavy duty. You know, it really doesn't turn much. I mean, if that thing turns, you know, five degrees, it's going to be a lot. Yeah. But I wanted it strong. I mean, that's that's holding the whole rear end suspension, takes the full torque load. Amazing. So what kind of trans is this? That's a Tremec 5-speed. Now, this is just a case, but I have the complete trans, but... It's just a little lighter to use the case, but that, that is the transmission. And we have a uh, scatter shield, steel scatter shield, and we welded wings onto that to have actually additional motor mounts for the torque load and distribute the torque load on the frame. So we're mounting the engine with four mounts and we're reaching out also. So we have a little leverage over that torque load. And we still have the, uh, the um, transmission mount too. It's a little tougher mount. It's a urethane, uh, urethane mount. But that unloads by uh, having the four mounts on the engine. It really unloads uh, a lot of uh, a torque that the, the transmission case would see. And so what did you end up doing in the front here? We're running a, uh, a straight axle and I wanted that old gasser look. So we actually cut the axle in the middle and we added six inches to it, so we made it wider. And what that did was it pushed the wheels out kind of to the outside of the body. And it did that for a few different reasons. One, of course, you have the stability. It's a nice look, but it also gives us a lot more room to run the exhaust. We're gonna hand build headers that come off the, uh, off the head, over the frame, and they're gonna come down in this area and they're going to come out in here and then we've got some great big four inch mufflers wow that'll be hanging in this area here and that's the reason for some of these uh, sculptures is to clear the big mufflers so i have room but they're going to be hanging down a little bit as well for uh, for cooling and we have the height anyway with the straight axle the, the gasser look typically sits up a little bit well awesome it's coming and here's the other stoppers in the front Oh, These yeah. will bolt down here the same way. Now, the reason that doesn't line up exactly is because you're working with an arch spring 
and as that flattens, the spring is going to lengthen, and when it does that, then it will line up with this. Gotcha. Put all the uh, steering linkages in. I, I kept all the uh, control rods straight. I used uh, a small GM steering box. Put an offset in the in the pitman arm. Hot rod column. Factory location. Looks good. Yeah, we'll drop it down so you can see the top. I like the wheels. Yeah, they're the classic gas wheel. So I heard that's going to be 800, how much 800 what? Over 800 horsepower and over 800 foot pounds of torque. That's the, uh, that's the reason for the extra superstructure. And the car would never take that kind of love originally. So you can see the you can see some of the truss system here. And what that does, that eliminates all the flex and torque loads that would be in the frame. If you think of just two rails, they're going to, uh, they're going to twist and move. And the, the body is, um, you know, the body's really going along for the ride. Well, they wanted all the, uh, all the structure into the, into the frame. And you can see that those, trusses that go inside the car, they're removable. And they come right in. Oh, I see. And that's where it goes through the floor into the uh, frame. That goes uh, through the floor and goes to the end of the ladder bar mount. So that's nice. what I call the superstructure. The rest of the frame really goes along for the ride. Awesome. Well, that's great. Should be a fun car, huh? It's a fun project, you know. It's Good all deal. about the project. Cool.